Prepare to get gas because it's time for the week in gear. This week, there's a leak from Epiphone and a modern classic amp gets an update in collaboration with a great British guitar player with an afro. This show is brought to you by Guitar Leg. More about them later. Okay, let's kick off this week's most exciting gear releases with that leak from Epiphone. Just 14 days after Fender entered the multi-effects game, Epiphone popped their heads up to say, we can do effects too. The Epiphone Power Players multi-effects pedal was leaked by Sweetwater and a few other online stores, and a few people online were a little bit upset, and the whole release, or leak, was met with some severe criticism. Sweetwater originally had this listed for $199, but it's been taken down now, and other people have seen it online for cheaper than that. This is an all-in-one pedal containing delay, distortion, and overdrive, plus a tuner, stereo amp out jacks, an effects loop, and XLR outs with a cab sim. It's basically a fly rig, or everything you probably need in one pedal. Now, if this looks familiar, it's because the Epiphone Power Players Multi-Effects pedal is simply a rebranded Tone Chain TC1 from Joyo. That explains those nasty, nasty looking XLR sockets. That's not fair. Now, I also felt that this was a very poor move from Epiphone, but then I realized that this product was not meant for me. Yes, this is a budget pedal, but Power Players is in the title, and Epiphone must be aiming this at beginners and younger players. This is the pedal that a music store tries to upsell the parents when they're buying their child their first guitar. It's a strange move from Epiphone, but it absolutely makes sense. And at that price, it's actually pretty affordable, and importantly, very simple to use. No menu diving, not too many switches, it's all laid out in front of you perfect for a beginner. So it's easy for seasoned guitarists to marvel at this move from Epiphone, but if I was a clueless parent seeing a brand that I recognize offering something that is beneficial for my child at a reasonable price, then why not? At number four this week, it's time to cut the cable as Nuex have released a professional grade guitar wireless unit at a mid-range price. The new X B8 is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless sender and receiver system that is honestly packed with features. Here we go. A six and a half hour battery life, an inbuilt tuner, an effects loop, a selectable cable tone, DI out with ground lift, and the receiver can be powered by a standard pedal board power supply with nine volts. <gasps> You can place the sender on the receiver to charge it, and most impressively, you can customize the boot up image with a GIF of your choice. Guitar Center have this listed at around 300 bucks, and although that's not a budget unit, the B8 has features normally only found on units costing way more than 300. I really like what the B8 is offering. I am a wireless user on stage, and I have the excellent Shure GLX16 Plus, which I'm very happy with. But this new X system seems well built, seems well thought out, and it is well priced. This unit could be comparable with the big boys without the pro price tag. I will be getting one in the studio and I will test it and come back with some results very soon. Before we get to number three on the list, it's time to talk about this week's sponsor, Guitar Leg. Guitars are great, but if you stand them up, they do tend to fall over a lot. It's almost as if they weren't designed for that. But what are we supposed to do when we need to put our guitars down? Lay our precious instrument on the floor or up against a wall? So what's the solution? Enter Guitar Leg. It's the stand that sticks to your guitar, allowing you to go about your business when you're not noodling the pentatonic scale or strumming Wonderwall. It's easy to attach and it folds flat when you don't need it. Guitar Leg. Give your guitar a leg to stand on. Follow the link in the video description for more info and availability. To talk a little bit more about the sponsor this week, I originally said no to Guitar Leg because I originally thought the idea was a little bit silly, but after trying one, I changed my mind. Um, guitar Leg is not intended to be used on your high-end guitars, but as a street musician and music educator, I think the Guitar Leg is absolutely a great way to always have some way to stand your working guitar upright. And then when you want to take it off, you just do that, and it's almost like it's not there. 
Well, I can't feel it. So Guitar Leg is a serious product and it does seem ridiculous at first, but I stand behind that I would use that, or I am using this on my working guitar because it's much more convenient than the alternative. Although I can't get it back on there. Hang on, there we go, there, back on. One hands-free standing guitar. Okay, third on this week's most exciting gear is Gretsch with some limited edition pure guitar porn. New to the Gretsch professional collection for 2023 are the Paisley Penguin and Sidewinder. And these beauties are classier than a swan driving a Bentley to collect first prize at the 2023 Finest Feather Awards. The limited edition Bourbon Sidewinder has an arched flame maple top with a single cut chambered mahogany body and a mahogany neck. The ebony fretboard has a 12 inch radius and 22 frets. And as for pickups, it's Gretsch, so it's custom wound TV Jones. Finishing off the spec list is a Graftech XL nut, Goto locking tuners, Grover strap locks, and a Bigsby B3P vibrato. It is, however, the bourbon stain nitrolose finish that makes this guitar stand out to me. But the Paisley Penguin is the real show stealer here. It's another single cut chambered mahogany body and mahogany neck with an arched maple top, but this time covered in black and silver sparkle Paisley with gold hardware, including an armrest that says, yes, I am money. The pickups are also TV Jones, but this time humbuckers. The nut is bone and the Bigsby B3 GP vibrato looks right at home on a traditional guitar. But this penguin also features modern things like Lumin lay side dots on the neck and Grover Imperial locking tuners. Do they come with a hard case? Yes, they do. And for around 3K for the Sidewinder and three and a half K for the Penguin, I should flip him well hope so. That was a Penguin joke, because they got flippers. Now these guitars seem like the sort of classy opulence that Gibson tried to achieve, but somehow Gretsch make it classy, whereas I have never seen a Les Paul that looks good overdressed and I think a black Les Paul custom is Gibson's pinnacle of class. I love what Gretsch have done here and I like their approach to pushing those classic designs a little further and that Paisley Penguin, well that's the sort of guitar that keeps me up at night wondering where my credit card is. The number two spot this week goes to the Kraken Mark II by Victory Amps and the much beloved Afro-toting guitar playing Brit Rabia Massad. Available in a lunchbox or compact format, the Mark II builds on the success of the Mark I with a few new features. This all valve 50 watt high gain monster has now had a clean mode added to the existing gain one and gain two, which can be engaged by a foot switch or on the front panel. There's a shared EQ and two master volume controls, as well as a series effects loop and a bass focus and a present shift for the new presence control. Also on the back, the Kraken Mark II has a gain balance control, which helps to fine tune the levels between the clean and gain one modes. The Kraken Mark II has four 12AX7 preamp tubes and two 6L6 power tubes, but it'll also accept EL34s if you so wish. And it can operate in full 50 watt mode or a lower nine watt mode. Now, the original Kraken was a behemoth of tone and Rabia and Victory are pretty much certain to have improved on it with the Mark II. I dig that Kraken so hard and when Rabia plays it, it's just, well, it's Rabia, right? I've had the Victory Sheriff 25 in the studio for a while now and I've reviewed it this week and that thing never fails to impress me every time I play through it. So if Victory can do the same thing for high gain players, and this Kraken Mark II is absolutely sure to be a success. Links to everything, of course, in the video description. The lunchbox comes with a gig bag and both are made in the UK and will set you back around 1600 bucks. Not cheap, but... Andy's Pick of the Week. My pick of the week is the new Marshall Bluesbreaker clone from Electro Harmonics. Rather than an expensive boutique point-to-point -point homage to the Marshall that you need to wait years for, EHX bring us a tweaked Bluesbreaker circuit at an accessible price called the Spruce 
Goose. The $129 overdrive swaps the tone control for separate bass and treble knobs, and also on the panel is a lift switch that selects between three levels of input gain, which gives you a more saturated and more compressed tone by boosting or goosing the front end of the drive circuit. Now the name makes sense. A more hidden feature is the momentary foot switch, which you can tap on and off like a regular bypass or hold down to turn the pedal on while you have your foot engaged. Then you can just do momentary gain boosts for solos and riffs that you want people to pay attention to. I love the Blues Breaker sound and the official Electro Harmonics demo of the Spruce Goose sounds great. The two main things EHX have got going here is the price and that lift switch because sometimes a Marshall Blues Breaker benefits from being pushed by another pedal. And the Spruce Goose does all that within one box and for 129 bucks. The price puts it firmly at the budget end of pedals that can break the blues and I can't wait to try one someday. Thank you to the supporters of the show who now have their names on screen and a special thanks to the top tier members. Buddha Blue. This prank is officially sponsored by Jason Welch. Basil. Sean Aloka. Sarang Narayan. Josh Tamberg. Gary O'Neill. Stephen S. April Kurtz. Alinta Boston. Doug Paget. If you want your name up in lights, then click on the join button right down there somewhere on YouTube or visit my Patreon link in the video description. And as we're talking about links and stuff, there's all product links and things like that down there. But most importantly, I'm getting dangerously close to 100,000 subscribers. And when I reach 100,000 subscribers, I'm giving away 10 prizes from several large guitar pedal amp making companies that have donated stuff. So if you want to be in a chance to win some really cool gear, there's also information about that in the video description. I know it's not a Telegram thing, and if those show up, I'll get rid of them. The only way you can enter this competition is to subscribe and click that link for more information. And if you do subscribe, then I promise you'll be kept up to date on all new guitar gear. But don't forget to comment your pick of the week in case it's different to mine. But remember that new gear is nice and it's not important what you play, it's why you play. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.